John Tavares was rushed to the hospital during Game 1 of the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. As Tavares was falling down from a hit he took, Canadians forward Corey Perry's knee struck Tavares in the head. The Maple Leafs trainer jumped onto the ice and attempted to keep Tavares' neck still, but he tried to get up and then fell backward. The trainer immediately put his fist up in the air to signal for a stretcher to be brought out. More medical personnel rushed onto the ice to help attend to Tavares who was being placed on a stretcher. As he was being taken off the ice, he gave a thumbs up sign. Jake Evans had to be stretchered off the ice after being hit by Jets forward Mark Schiff Lee. With 57 seconds remaining in the game, Evans skated behind the net to score a wraparound when he was hit hard, causing Evans to land face first on the ice. Evans remained motionless while both teams started a scrum off to the side. Evans did not go to the hospital and was evaluated by Canadians doctors overnight at their hotel, the brutal hit caused Evans to sustain a concussion. Eric Carlson and Matt Cook were going into the corner for a loose puck when Cook raised his left skate and it came down on Carlson's left heel. Carlson attempted to push off but immediately started screaming in pain. An on-ice official helped push Carlson towards training staff and he was helped off the ice, he underwent surgery to repair a 70% tear in his Achilles. Johnny Boychuk suffered a career-ending eye injury when he was cut across the eyelid by the skate of Canadians forward Arturi Lekanen. It was the second injury to the same eye in his career, he required 90 stitches and plastic surgery. Eye tests revealed optic nerve damage and a severe lack of peripheral vision. He sought more diagnoses, but doctors told him that it was unsafe for him to continue playing, and he decided to call it quits without officially retiring. While playing with the Hartford Whalers in 1982, Mark Howe slid into the pointy middle part of the goal, and he was impaled by the metal, opening up a 5-inch long gash in his thigh. The injury nearly ended his career and prompted the NHL to change the design of its nets so that there would no longer be a center portion that jutted up toward the goal line. Brian Little was hit in the side of the head by a slap shot from teammate Nikolai Ehlers. Little fell to the ice by the side of the net, he stayed down for a few minutes, but was able to make his way off the ice under his own power. He suffered internal bleeding in the brain caused by a burst artery and a perforated eardrum. He has not played since the injury. Matt Zuccarello was hit in the side of the head by a slap shot from teammate Ryan McDonough. He immediately left the ice under his own power, but once in the locker room, he was unable to get a single word out to the trainer that was assessing him. He suffered a brain contusion and a fractured skull that had him hospitalized for three days. It took him four days to regain his speech and several weeks to get up from the couch without feeling dizzy. Brian Burrard suffered a gruesome eye injury when an opponent was attempting to one-time a loose puck and missed, resulting in the blade of the stick striking him in the right eye. The eye was severely slashed on the scara which resulted in a retinal tear and a detached retina. Team doctors made an immediate determination that he needed to be transported to a hospital for emergency surgery. The surgery lasted three and a half hours and the doctors were skeptical that he would ever see again. The following morning, he was able to identify when the lights were on and off. Although he missed a full season, he was able to be fitted with a contact lens that allowed him to meet the league's minimum vision requirement. Chris Pronger collapsed after suffering cardiac arrhythmia when a puck hit him in the chest, just left of his heart, and caused him to go down on one knee before getting up and attempting to skate away. He would only take a few strides before collapsing on the ice in front of the linesman. He was unconscious for about 20 to 30 seconds. He would spend the night at the hospital for observation and would be released the following day. He would be back on the ice two days later and played 